Hey, what's up guys? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection, and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number 20. Uh, of course, we already know this is final week, so what I want you to do is review the past four lessons uh, in your book, and also review the last four videos that you've been watching, or maybe the last three uh, videos that you've been watching over here. Now, I wanted to also hook you guys up with some additional Pro Tools knowledge, so go ahead and fire up your Pro Tools, and we'll get started. All right, guys, so hopefully you have a Pro Tools session pulled up. Now, if you don't have a Pro Tools session pulled up, don't worry about it. Uh, just take plenty of notes, and uh, yeah, you're going to go ahead and try this out at a later time anyways. Uh, so cool. Let's go ahead and uh, learn some new things in Pro Tools. One of the first things I want to go ahead and show you is something called the stutter effect. It's actually a pretty easy effect to get going, so uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Now, actually... Uh, before I show you how to do the stutter effect, let me show you how the song sounds like so you can hear the difference once the stutter effect is actually applied. Okay, uh, so we have uh, this uh, one, it seems like a note that just kind of drags on for a little while. So we want to go ahead and excite it a little bit by actually uh, implicating the uh, stutter effect. So what I did is I went ahead and I made some cuts uh, so far, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mute some of these so the stutter effect could actually, uh, you know, come into action. Alright, so cool. Uh, the way that you make cuts, uh, this is a very important thing, is uh, you go to your grid area and make sure that's selected. And then you go to this grid area right here on the um, uh, transport bar and just go ahead and click where it says, uh, I'm sorry, click where it says uh, the, the note values. And you want to go ahead and make sure that you're selecting the right note value uh, for the grid for the, each uh, one of your edits. In this case, I already know that 16th note is going to be what works for this. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that selected, and I'm going to continue making more cuts. Okay. So the way that you make cuts is actually pretty simple. All you need to do is, uh, well, make sure you have your selector tool uh, first selected, and uh, then you'll go ahead and hit Command E right over one of these grid lines. Okay. So first you'll click uh, on the grid line uh, using your selector tool, and then the way you cut would be Command E and now it's cut. And I'm going to do this a few more times. Okay. Now the next step for uh, doing the stutter effect is uh, actually pretty simple. You're going to go ahead and select your uh, grabber tool and then every other uh, you know little cut area that you just made you're going to want to select that so that you could kind of have a in and out like a cutting in and out effect so you could either delete that or mute it and I actually prefer if you would actually just mute it uh, just in case you wanted to go ahead and re-edit that okay so that's going to be command M to mute and now it's grayed out so now you know it's muted So this is a part where it gets kind of tedious, of course, but your end result's always worth it. Very nice. Okay, so this should kind of give me the effect that I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So the stutter effect actually will liven up a lot of different uh, elements of a song. What I would say the best thing to use the stutter effect is with vocals, of course, uh, or anything else that has long sustaining notes. You'll definitely be able to hear when it starts breaking apart and it makes it a lot more interesting. All right, very cool. So let's go ahead and move on to our next tip. Now this is actually a pretty cool one. Essentially what you're going to uh, learn how to do is how to do a slow down effect uh, with your audio. It's uh, pretty cool. It sounds like a uh, record slowing down. It's really good for building up your next uh, section of your song. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and uh, use your selector tool. Select the area that you'd like to go ahead and apply this effect to. And then um, go to your audio suite area. Go to pitch shift. Verify. Very nice. 
And uh, from here, you could either slow it down, which would be kind of like a record slowdown, or you could speed it up. Uh, imagine if you had your music on a record player or on a record, and you would uh, skip the, the, the record forward. I wanted to say CD so bad, but you would skip that uh, record forward. Uh, so let's go ahead and render this and uh, see how this sounds. Actually, let's make it a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to select a little bit more of the regions right here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and render this and we'll hear how it sounds in a second. So right now it just created some uh, uh, rendered files to give us uh, that kind of a uh, record effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and hear how this sounds. <laughs> So that's actually, you know, uh, when, when done better than that, but this, that's pretty much the uh, basis of doing it. That will definitely uh, add a little bit of a dramatic, uh, you know, effect to your next segment. So let's go ahead and hear it one more time. It's going to slow down and then move into our next uh, little section. <laughs> So that's pretty much how you would use that effect. Uh, of course, uh, you would want to have a bigger buildup so when you have the slowdown, it's more dramatic, of course. But that's basically how you would do it. You would select your region, you would go over to your audio suite, then of course you would uh, go to pitch shift, verify, uh, and then you would just render it. Okay. And if you didn't like the way that sound, all you need to do is just, uh, you know, command Z and everything's back to the way uh, it was previously. All right, and the last thing I want to go ahead and show you was a really great way of um, pretty much uh, not taxing your <laughs> your CPU so hard. It's actually really easy to do that once you start introducing more and more uh, MIDI tracks. Uh, what's great about MIDI tracks is you can get really awesome sounds on uh, your computer and into Pro Tools uh, really easily. One thing that's bad about it is that it really does take up a lot of CPU space, uh, not space, but a lot of CPU um, power and uh, you'll end up uh, crashing uh, more often than not. So uh, one way to combat that is to go ahead and once you have your virtual instrument, your MIDI uh, track the way you want it, go ahead and bounce it out and turn it into a WAV file. At that point, it's already been rendered and no longer has to hit that CPU so hard. So the way you do this, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you would select the region where your MIDI's at. For, for me, I just went ahead and just made one note uh, what I'll go ahead and do is uh, solo that track and then from there all I need to do is go ahead and uh, select the area uh, from beginning to end where that MIDI note is actually at it doesn't matter how many things I select as long as I just uh, make sure I select uh, from the beginning of end, end of this uh, note right here it's uh, since it's soloed it won't pick up any of the other sounds uh, which is what exactly what you want you just want the one MIDI sound or else if you uh, kinda left this uh, un uh, unsoloed everything else would actually get recorded uh, with uh, your bounce and you don't want that so you just want the one individual sound now we've soloed that then all you need to do from there is go over to where it says bounce to disk okay and you'll just go ahead and uh, that would be file, bounce to disk, or you have the short key command right here. And then I'll give you some options. Uh, what I like to do is just make sure that I uh, am selecting my stereo output to kind of keep things on the safe side. I know that I do want a WAV file. Uh, what I like to do is to go ahead and have it uh, converted during the bounce. Uh, and then, of course, what I like to do is have it imported into my track file or into my uh, session. Uh, once it's done bouncing, okay? And then, I'll, uh, of course, it's going to prompt you to go ahead and uh, name it. So we'll call this um, Dance Lead. Actually, uh, Dance Lead Audio. All right, cool. I'll go ahead and hit Save. And now that's all done. And it gives you uh, a couple little options here. You can either uh, put in your clip list or you can go ahead and add it as a new track. It'll also allow you to either 
put this in the beginning of your uh, section or uh, session or you can go ahead and uh, wherever you had uh, that area selected it'll actually drop it in there which I actually prefer okay so I'll hit OK and as you can see there's my new dance lead and then all you need to do from there is hit mute over here and now it's now it's part of the song so let's go ahead and hit play So it's right there and uh, of course it makes things a lot uh, better for your computer. Obviously you're not going to be uh, crashing as often if you use this little tip. Uh, so I hope it helped and uh, yeah that's uh, all the video that I have. Uh, so again you guys are week 20, congratulations for making it this far. Uh, I really hope that you guys are uh, really pushing your education to the next level, really learning everything that you guys can to become really great recording engineers and it's been really, uh, really great. Uh, working with you guys. So, uh, of course, uh, keep on following those goals, and I'll catch you guys next time.